We're continuing with the subjunctive, Kavala Ficklin McLean. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, welcome, W Y L C O N E. And here we're going to be talking about verbs that take both the indicative and the subjunctive. I've said this a thousand times that it's all according to the meaning. But here are some verbs as examples or more examples, I should say, um, when I say according to the meaning. And sometimes these verbs, when you translate them have two meanings. So when such verbs, such verbs require the subjunctive, when you're talking about a wish, a desire, or a command, whether it's stated directly or it's only implied. An example would be decidir. Now when decidir is in the black, it means to come to the, come to the conclusion or come to a conclusion. That's indicative, right? But when decidir means to decide, when it's the actual cognate, when it means to decide. So you're gonna decide that um, he's guilty or you're going to believe or, well not believe, but you are going to decide, but it's still doubtful. Then it's used the subjunctive. They see dear now in the black when it means to announce. No, it's the it's the uh, indicative. But when it means to demand or to order, I say, I'm saying that you're not going out tonight. Te digo que no salgas hoy, or Esta noche, or, or um, let me see. Um, te digo que, uh, yeah, te digo que escribas la carta ahorita. Yeah, ahorita que escribes la carta. Okay. That's, they see it not meaning to announce. Digo que, um, I don't know, digo que uh, hoy es martes, okay? That's not announcing, you're demanding something from someone or you're ordering something from someone. Another example would be establecer que. Now when it means to establish, to state that, that's the indicative. You're just making an objective observation. But when it means it's to stipulate that, that's more in the realm of the subjunctive because you're not making an objective statement. It's either a wish or a command or desire or encouraging or in motivation, but it's not the indicative. It's not just making an objective um, statement. Pre, pretender, pretender que. When you mean to claim that, no problem, indicative. But when it means to try to, to aim at, to wish that, These are words that trigger the subjunctive. So you have words such as decir, establecer, pretender. What was the first one? I forgot. Ah, decidir. And hold on. Okay, I'm going to come back to this one. I'm gonna do on um, this one. I'm gonna do my, uh, the the uh, 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 card by itself. Or when you mean there it is, they see it, and once again the asterisk means um, it's irregular. So these verbs, when they have the meaning 
a, a command advisor order. I already said they see there, but I didn't say sugerir, mandar, because mandar has two meanings. It could either mean to send or to order. Pedir. You, you know, John asked a question, that's, that's indicative. But if I ask that you not call me after nine, that's an order, not very strong. Rogar, exigir, remember asterisk means irregular. Escribir, escribes que. No hables con Juan. Write that. Uh, don't speak to John. Okay. Aconsejar, recomendar. Then it's a subjunctive when it falls within the realm of command, advice, or order, versus when it form, when you're just giving me a, an objective statement, statement of fact. So this one is not too long, but once again, these are key words, but you have to understand what the word means in the sentence. As I said before, subjunctive, not, you can't memorize it. You can memorize the um, indicative much easier than you can the subjunctive because most, well, I couldn't say most words. I can't say that because in Spanish, a lot. Just imagine how you talk to your child. Your child is a lot is in subjunctive because you want him to do this, you command that he does this, you, you advise him to do this. A lot is in a subjunctive, a lot. I would even say maybe the subjunctive is even more popular, it's, it's even used more than the um, indicative. Okay, so we'll come back. We'll come back to this. Okay, we'll come back to this. And I'm gonna only do one card on it, just to give you the vocabulary. This is good vocabulary. So this is Corrala Ficklin McLean at, no, Corrala Ficklin McLean. Welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-N-E.com. You can always look up, look up my name also, C-A-R-R-A-L-A, -R -R -A -A, that's Corrala. Ficklin is F as in food, I-C-K-L-I-N. And McLean is M-C. C L A I N. And by the way, the second C I normally capitalize. Okay, um, Corrala Ficklin McLean, look me up and you'll find other websites. They're old though, they're very old websites, but they might be of help to you. I have recordings and I don't know if I have, I have videos also, but most of all, I have cards, cards. I've been making cards ever since 19 something, 1990. 899, maybe even 96, 90, no, not 96, since like 98. So I have hundreds and hundreds of cards. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing. Going to thank you. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.